Hello, hello, hello. So today we are on the H H66, the racing versions, and you will see it's pretty extraordinary. It's pretty unusual. So follow me. Hi, my name is Seth Hines. I'm with HH Catamarans, and today we have Nemo, our HH66, at the Annapolis Boat Show. So this is our HH66, and uh, we've built six of these boats. Uh, these boats skew a little bit more towards racing, uh, but also they are cruising boats. So this boat in particular uh, was skewed very heavily towards racing. The whole boat was actually designed, this owner wanted to have a boat faster than his older brother's boat. Uh, so uh, they were racing and competing with each other, and he came to us and said, you know, basically I want to build the lightest and fastest HH66 you guys can build me. So every single decision that was made in the construction of this boat uh, was all to do with weight. So everything from titanium deck gear, obviously the entire boat itself is carbon fiber, carbon fiber decks, hulls, carbon boom, carbon mass, carbon laundron, all the furniture is carbon fiber, even the toilets are carbon fiber on this boat. And what that gets you in the end is an incredibly light but very powerful boat. So it's a 16 ton boat. When we combine that with our dagger boards that actually give eight tons of displacement reductions, they actually lift the boat by eight tons, you're really talking about only an eight ton boat, yet it has a 30 meter tall mast, uh, so it's got a massive sail area, massive sail plan. So the power to weight distribution uh, or ratio in those two is really what propels this boat so, so fast. So in terms of speeds, we're talking about uh, this boat would fly a hull in just eight knots of wind. That would reduce the wetted surface and then the boat would, would quickly approach doubling wind speeds. So you'd be talking about, you know, probably 15 knots of boat speed in just eight knots of wind. In terms of controlling the boat, uh, there'd be one person here at the helm. Uh, I'd, I'd be the mainsail trimmer. I've got uh, electronic controls of the Traveler or starboard to port, and then also a uh, uh, hydraulic main sheet. So this would be sheeting out, sheeting in. You'd really be kind of flying the hull and controlling the boat with this joystick. I'd also be controlling the dagger board, so we can obviously uh, hoist and lower those dagger boards, but also control the forward and aft placement of the boards. And then even the rudders have elevators, so I'm controlling those down here as well. So the, the whole boat, uh, you can really control the pitch and elevation of the nose uh, of the boat as you're kind of rounding the top mark and heading down, um, trying to keep, keep the boat as light as possible and, uh, and keep that hull in the air. So here we have uh, carbon fiber rigging on this boat. Most of our HH catamarans have EC3 or Kevlar rigging, so both very strong and very light. Uh, and then most of our boats also have a, a load uh, cell in, this, in the shrouds. So you actually have uh, load data that goes back to your B&G display and that tells you how much load is on the rig. And this is very helpful information because especially for cruising, you know, you don't want to reef based on some arbitrary uh, reefing plan, but rather you actually know how much load is on your rig. And so I liken it kind of to a tachometer where uh, you're reaching red line, you know you need to reef, you shift gears, uh, your loads come back down, uh, you're in the second reef, and then you kind of reef based on real data. So it's a, it's a helpful racing feature that kind of has come down into the cruising world. So these are the Z-boards I was talking about. These are pre-preg carbon fiber. They need to be incredibly strong to be able to lift eight tons of load. Uh, they're enormous, as you can see, and these ones actually can't as well. So we have an upper bearing and a lower bearing, and then those bearings can move forward and aft, and that allows us to place the board to match the sail area. Uh, with dagger boards, you're always really looking to kind of, you know, offset what's happening with the sail plan uh, underwater, and that's what uh, this boat allows us to do. So up here you can see we, uh, we have, again, um, you know, a carbon lingeron. We have four different halyards that go to different sails. You can run a J1 and 2 that go to the track. A J3 would be on the uh, forestay, again, a carbon forestay. Uh, then you have like, probably an A2 on the next halyard up, and then a downwind sail on the fourth halyard. Uh, none of these, as you can see, are furling, so no, there's no furling sails. That's why you do need a bit of a crew on this boat. Uh, and again, the reason we don't have furling sails is you'd have weight with the foil to ho hoist that, but then also the disruption of the airflow with a large sail wrapped up here. So you wanna try to limit the disruption on all the other sails as possible. We do use halyard locks. So these are bullets that would lock up into the mast. So you have all your tension is mechanical and the halyards are loose. Um, and then you would control all of that uh, tension in, um, on the sails using the Cunningham. So this uh, lingeron here actually has a hydraulic ram that allows you to tension all the, the Cunninghams appropriately for the load. So the mast we have here is a Lorima 30 meter tall mast. It's got four different reefing points on it and it is a rotating mast. So somebody here in the pit would be controlling the rotation of the mast. And really that's for light air sailing. You really want to get the maximum shape of the airflow off the, the sail. And, and the mast itself is almost arrow, arrow shaped itself. So almost like a wing shape. And so you can create some uh, lift 
but just with the mass alone, especially with it this tall. Um, this would again be kind of a racing feature. We don't put rotating mass on our cruising boats. Uh, our cruising boats would have furling head sails, a fixed mast, uh, but they would be carbon. And uh, they would be similar in one regard in that we actually tension all of our rigs by jacking the mast up. So there's no turnbuckles uh, over on the shrouds that we saw earlier. Uh, and that is because we actually jack the mast up with a, new, with a uh, mast jack cylinder. And then we use these sheaves here to put the mast back down according to the height that we want it. And so that allows us to kind of tension the rig without having turnbuckles. And then given it's carbon or EC3 rigging, it's, that's really pretty much a set it and forget it. You don't need to constantly adjust your rig. So even though you can tell it's obviously a boat that is really heavily skewed towards racing, it is still a catamaran and that gives us an enormous amount of space to build really whatever our clients want. Uh, that could be, you know, a carbon fiber table or, you know, high end stone, anything that they really want, you know, custom back here. The furniture can be moved around. We have boats with barbecue grills and, and fish cleaning stations uh, to, you know, huge tables that fold out and seat eight people. It really depends on what the owners want. We can build that. So coming inside, uh, this boat, as you can see, just the sheer space that you have to work with. Again, all the furniture is custom. We can lay this out any way that the customer would, would desire. Uh, this customer you know, has a very large U-shaped galley, a large nav table with additional food prep area, a large dining table. Uh, this cabinet even is quite unique. Uh, you can still have the luxuries of an ice maker and a wine fridge, but if that's too much weight for racing, say it's a really light air day, this cabinet was actually designed to be removable so you can take this off, leave it on the dock, and again, reduce the weight of the boat even further. You can tell it's a little bit Spartan in this boat. You know, normally we might have this teak wood would continue with a curtain box and there would be curtains that come down or we might even wrap the mullions with leather just to kind of soften the boat a little bit and make it a bit more like a home. Uh, but this owner, again, it's all about weight. Uh, he chose these windows that are frosted. Um, they actually, they, if you put a charge to them, they go clear. And so when, they're, when there's no charge, they're frosted like you see right now. And that means we don't need to have curtains. So again, we're uh, reducing the weight of the boat just through technology. So down here we have the master cabin. So this would be a king size bed, uh, plenty of headroom as you can see. I'm six foot four, so lots of room for me to stand. Uh, lots of light coming into the boat through these real glass windows. Uh, we don't use any plastic windows on the boat. Um, and then again, that carbon furniture and teak, real wood kind of carries on throughout. Uh, we have Antico flooring, uh, carbon fiber air conditioning vents, and as I said earlier, carbon fiber toilets behind you. So in here, this is the other VIP cabin with another king size bed. You know, normally in a lot of our boats, we would have, you know, leather stitched uh, wall panels and a leather stitched headboard, uh, very large aft facing windows. Uh, but really, you know, the, on this boat, again, it was really just about weight savings, keeping the walls incredibly clean. Everything's been fared and painted. Uh, very easy to maintain and, and take care of this boat. So we're on the uh, starboard side. Again, forward, we've got a queen size bed. Uh, these would be the dagger boards uh, in, in terms of how much they come into the hull. But you can see you actually still have plenty of room. And then in here, it's quite interesting. This boat has opted for a workshop. Uh, but this could also be crew quarters, uh, bunk bed, whatever it is you really want to build into the boat. And then the last cabin, fourth cabin on this boat is on the port side forward. Uh, this is another queen for VIPs with their own private ensuite. So up here, this would be the forward pit. Uh, this is where all the main halyards would be. So you'd be hoisting all of your sails here. Uh, you'd be reefing the sails. We'd have our four reef lines here and then also the four reefing trip lines. So it looks like a lot of, a lot of uh, halyards and lines, but actually it's organized fairly easily for the people to operate. Uh, the other last feature up here you'd be operating would be the rotating mast. Uh, so here we are on the aft uh, side of Nemo. Um, we have carbon fiber davits, of course. This allows you really to haul any dinghy you want. Uh, this boat, of course, would be a lightweight dinghy on this boat. Uh, but, you know, it can be a 14-foot uh, dinghy, whatever it is you'd want to bring with you. Well, thank you very much for visiting HH Catamarans. I hope you enjoyed a tour of our HH-66. Again, this one was skewed toward racing. Uh, we can make it as comfortable, as beautiful inside as you want. So if you, uh, if you want a boat like this or even anything uh, larger or smaller, uh, please come check us out, HH Catamarans.